As a part of NASA's CLPS initiative, Blue Ghost Mission 1 will deliver 10 NASA payloads to Mare Crisium, which is in the northeast quadrant of the moon's near side. This mission in particular marks a significant step forward in advancing our lunar research and enabling a sustainable presence on the moon. We've developed this in central Texas, just outside of Austin, and our Blue Ghost Lunar Lander will enable payloads to operate through transit into the lunar night, which is about 14 Earth days, and will also operate into the freezing lunar night. It's been a little over three years since we won the CLPS task order. It's been really interesting. You basically spend a little over the first year designing the vehicle and understanding the requirements and laying a really strong foundation. And then you move into basically your manufacturing and integration phase over almost two full years. And then you close out you know, with over a year of testing. So this is integrated testing on the lander and then ultimately environmental testing of the spacecraft itself. So so you kind of see these different phases of the vehicle from birth all the way through landing on the moon. To design a lander, really you look at your core requirements. And the main thing for landing on the moon is that mass is king. Um, getting a kilogram to the surface of the moon costs between one and two million dollars. So for something the size of a water bottle, it's about a million dollars to send that to the surface of the moon. So you're really trying to mass optimize everything you can, but there's this extra constraint on the CLIPS program where they want you to get to the surface within two and a half or three years. So there really isn't a lot of time for development. So to optimize the mass, you look at how far a launch vehicle can normally send you and what your starting point will be and how much propellant you need to get from there on down to the surface of the moon. For us, we were targeting about 100 kilograms of payload to the surface. I think there are multiple different facets to bringing things in-house. One is bringing in-house the design of something, so you fully own the design. You are the world expert on that design. And the other is the in-house manufacturing. And for the latter, I would say the bigger advantage is really the speed with, with which you can manufacture. For us, being able to rapidly get that hardware in our hands, to be able to test it, to be able to find the, the things that you know, maybe analysis didn't show us on a test stand, to test things until they fail, to really know the limits of what it can do, and then to go and build it again. Uh, the speed with which you can do that is really what's more important than, than I think who made it. And our technicians here, especially in the composites, have really been key in helping us do things rapidly. Our struts are a great example. We already make composite tubes. They were just rocket sized previously and we were able to task the engineering team with coming up with a new design. They were able to rapidly create it up at the Briggs facility uh, and they were able to rapidly test it. They had it designed, built, and qualified within about two weeks and then the week after that we received the components that are going to the moon. We have a diverse set of payloads going on this Blue Ghost mission. We have some that are operating in transit to the moon, tracking GPS signals, as well as testing out radiation-tolerant computing. But then on the surface of the moon, we have a couple of more robotic payloads that are interacting with the lunar surface. We have a pneumatic drill. It goes down the surface of the moon to understand heat fluxes and take some temperature measurements. We also have a Lunar Planet Vac. It essentially is collecting samples and processing those and getting some information from those. And it's doing it in a much more affordable way than has been done traditionally in the past. It's been such a journey to get there. And what excited me the most is seeing the first payload integrate onto the lander. We've been working so hard to get to that point. And after that first payload, was integrated, we kind of kept going payload after payload and got all of 10 payloads integrated onto the vehicle and functionally tested them out. That's just been very exciting. It's really getting real now that we can see all of the progress that's been made and all of those payloads on the lander. One of the things that motivates me a lot and inspires me a lot are the people that work on the program um, because everyone basically came from a very unique very diverse background, um, but came to work together to solve a joint problem. And so it's really interesting every day to see how people approach problems or see how people overcome challenges. And then ultimately, you know, you look into the clean room and you see the result of everyone's efforts. 